Welcome back. This is video two on community service ideas for teens. In the first video of this two-part series, we covered community service ideas that teens could do to fulfill existing needs of nonprofits in their area. So in this second video, we're gonna continue talking about some amazing ways that teens can make an impact in their community through service, but specifically focus on ways they can design their own projects to benefit a nonprofit they care about, and ways to combine service with other activities they've already got going on in their lives. The next category of service opportunities that I want to talk about is for when you have maybe a nonprofit or a cause that you care about and you're already connected to, but they don't have a specific volunteer need that you can do as a teenager right now. The idea for this is that you are going to think of an amazing project that will benefit the cause that you care about using your skills or talents, and you're going to pitch it to the nonprofit and agree to do it for them. If you're in a situation where you might have required community service hours for school or something, a written agreement between you and the nonprofit that shows what you've outlined that you're going to do for them can help mitigate any issues surrounding uh, whether the school approves you doing that project to fulfill your hours. So here's how you would start off this process. First, you wanna think about what you're interested in and what you're good at. There really is some way for you to make an impact in the world no matter what you're interested in and what your skills are from music to writing to playing video games. So once you figure out what sort of project you wanna do for a cause using the things that you're good at, such as create a video campaign telling the story about the people the nonprofit serves, or say organizing an awareness or fundraising event for that nonprofit. You wanna write out your plan, including a summary of what you're trying to do and what activities your project will entail. You wanna write out a timeline. So how many months you think this project will take from planning all the way to the end of the project. You wanna include your end deliverables. So how will you know the project is a success? Is it that you raised $500 for the nonprofit? So what are your goals basically? An end deliverable is basically what the nonprofit can expect you have accomplished by the end of your project. Finally, you're gonna to want to plan out with the nonprofit what kind of um, team member support you're gonna need from them. So let's say you are hoping to plan an event for a nonprofit and recruit all of your friends as volunteers to do some kind of uh, sporting event to raise money for the cause. Who on that nonprofit's team is going to have to help you out or meet with you or support that goal somehow? Is it gonna be their executive director? Is it gonna be whoever is in charge of fundraising? Is it gonna be a marketing person? You wanna kinda of think through these things before you pitch your ideas to the nonprofit so that they make sure that they have enough team member availability to adequately support you in the project that you're doing for them. When you have this plan sort of written out, you want to then share it with a nonprofit organization that you're hoping to partner with for your special service project. It might be a good idea before you reach out to that nonprofit to check their website and social media accounts to see what and major events or campaigns they have coming up in the very near future. The reason for that is they might be really overwhelmed and not have the bandwidth to respond to you quickly. So I don't want you to get discouraged if you don't get an answer right away. It's not that they don't care and don't wanna work with you, they might just really be busy at that moment. The benefits of designing and leading your own service project are that you get to come up with the whole thing using your unique skills and talents and lead it from start to finish. The downside is, of course, if the nonprofit is completely overwhelmed at that time of year and just doesn't have the ability to partner with you in an effective way, that's not something you can necessarily control. So you might not get to work with the nonprofit you picked out first. So if you already have a relationship with a nonprofit that you really care about, this could be a good fit for you. Otherwise, you might want to explore a number of different causes that you might consider could have a need for a project like the one you want to design. If you're wondering what a project that you design and lead could actually look like, here are a couple of ideas. You could design a social media marketing campaign for the cause that you care about. This might mean a series of photographs on Instagram that tell the story of the impact the cause is making. It could be a campaign that shares facts and statistics about the problem that the nonprofit is trying to solve. 
there's a lot of different directions you could go with this. Another cool idea I've seen is when a group of people organize a fundraiser by streaming video games. So it doesn't have to be super big time and have millions of people watching. Even getting some of your friends together and challenging your friends or your school to watch and donate money could really help the cause that you care about in your community. Are you pretty artistic? Maybe you want to consider designing a mural for a building that a nonprofit occupies. Here's one that's really great for the environment, upcycling. You could organize an upcycling or recycling party, challenge your friends to all bring something that their family was gonna throw away anyway, and then come up with cool craft ideas and how to reuse those things. As a bonus, you could do a campaign showing the before and after of what you did to transform that item to help the environment. Another do-it-yourself project is to organize a kindness campaign. I've seen kindness campaigns take a lot of different forms from painting kindness rocks that you can then lay out all over your neighborhood or school to letter writing campaigns where you are just telling other people in your community, whether they're friends or even strangers, how amazing they are and giving them a little bit of encouragement for the day. The final idea for a project that you can design and lead yourself is to organize a resource day. This is an event where you are basically spreading the word to people in your school or community or neighborhood about all of the resources available to help them with a particular thing. So it might be where they can go for mental health support, where to go if they need help with basic needs like clothing or food, or maybe even where they might find jobs or job training resources. The idea is that if more people know about and have access to these resources, they will be better off and get the help that they need in whatever area you're tackling. In this final section, I wanna talk about ways you can combine community service and helping causes that you care about with other things you just have going on in your life, like driver's ed or after school activities. These ideas are great if you just have a crazy schedule but really want to find a way to fit service into your everyday life. Number one, combining community service with an after-school job. A great way to get the best of both worlds is to invite your coworkers to be involved in a project for charity. A lot of businesses are already involved in something to help the community or are looking for ways to get involved, so there's no reason that you can't be the leader of this initiative and get your whole company involved in something great. When I was a teenager, I worked after school at a bakery and I saw one day that we were throwing away all of the pastries that were uneaten. So I worked with the manager to organize a way to donate those leftover pastries to a local food pantry so that they wouldn't go to waste. There are ways to build service into pretty much any type of workplace. If you work at a restaurant or some kind of grocery store, there might be opportunities to find a way to donate that leftover food or even organize a food drive for a cause in the community. If you work in retail or some kind of clothing store, you might be able to find inventory that isn't gonna be sold and make sure it gets to a good cause or organize a campaign with your manager to allow customers to donate some amount of money to a cause whenever they check out. If the place you work is looking for an awesome team building or training opportunity, why not volunteer together? Volunteering together is a great way to get to know your coworkers and hone those leadership skills while you're at it. Next up is combining community service with family time. Do you have a younger sibling? Get them involved too. Teach them how to do a simple service project with you. For example, making cards for homebound seniors. Then afterwards, sit down and talk to them about why helping people is important. There's a lot of great research out there that talks about how talking about and reflecting on service after you do it helps it become part of your everyday life in the future. So hey, you're not just helping a cause, you're training the next generation. Next is combining service with an after-school club. There are, of course, a lot of after-school clubs that are all about service, and those are awesome, but I'm actually talking about clubs that do not have a service theme already and how you can combine helping the community with those types of clubs. For example, clubs with an academic theme like math or science you could use those clubs and practice those things by tutoring younger kids in need on those subjects. If you're part of a debate club, 
why not find issues that you all care about as a club and make a video about the topic that you are trying to raise awareness about. Next up is sports. If you are part of a team, then you have a whole group of people who could be making an impact with you right there. You could invite other team members to chip in a little bit extra to raise money for sports equipment for kids who might not otherwise be able to afford to participate. Or maybe even host a lemonade stand at one of your sporting events to raise money for a cause that you all agree to support as a team. Another way to integrate service into other activities is through driving practice and driver's ed. Are you working on getting your learner's permit or driver's license? Why not combine driving practice with service? Many nonprofits need volunteers who could help them transport goods from one place to another. So we're talking about volunteer opportunities like bringing a meal to a homebound senior, transporting canned goods from the grocery store to the food bank, or maybe something like bringing a collection of clothes from a clothing charity for kids to a school where those kids will be receiving those items. The final way that you can combine service with things already going on in your life is through birthday parties. My organization has helped teens and families organize service parties and they're a lot of fun. So one way to approach service parties is that you ask your friends to, in lieu of presents, or hey, in addition to presents, bring some item or donation for charity. This might be a new toy for kids in the hospital or canned goods or some other item. And the other way to approach a service party is to make your whole party a service project like going out and baking a cake for the women's shelter, or even do a service project right there in your house, like assembling hygiene kits for people in need. I really hope that some of these ideas have gotten your wheels turning. I'll be sure to leave some links down below with some ways to find the opportunities that I've talked about, or even guides on how to design and lead your own service project idea. There really are endless unique and creative ways for teens to do community service to make an impact and the world really needs it. Do you have other unique or unexpected community service ideas for teens? Be sure to leave them in the comments below. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned because I'm going to be doing more videos on topics of community service for all ages. Other than that, you can expect to find more videos on social impact, nonprofits, and making a difference in your community every week on my channel.